This screencast is a brief introduction to relations. Relations are a modeling tool that we use a lot in computer science, and it's related to graphs. Relations give us a very general way of modeling. Just a couple of really simple examples. Um, and you should look at a textbook to see lots more. There, there are lots of examples, and the more you familiarize yourself with them, the better you'll understand relations. So, for example, we could have a set of people, and we could say two people are related if they are married to one another. Or we could have a set of cities, say all the United States cities bigger than a certain size, and we could say the two cities are related if there is a road between them. And we're not restricted to just one type of thing that we're going to have to be related. We could have books and people, and we could say a book is related to a person if the person is the author of the book. So a more formal definition is a relation is a subset of the Cartesian product of the sets that we're dealing with. So, for instance, in the books and people example, it would, we'd look at the Cartesian product of all people across all books, and that's all the ordered pairs of people and books. And then the relation would be the subset of that set. That's the ordered pairs where the first entry is some person and the second entry is a book that they're the author of. Most of the relations that we'll be talking about are what are called binary relations. In other words, there's two sets involved, which may be the same or different. So, But in general, a binary relation from a set A to a set B is a subset of the Cartesian product of A cross B. So notice the order here is important. From the set A to a set B. So in some senses, it's kind of like a function. Um, and then the relation, again, is a subset of A cross B. And we say two elements A and B are related. This means that A the ordered pair A comma B is in the relation R. Lots of times we don't want to go to all the extra work of writing down the ordered pair and we'll just write A capital R B where R stands for the relation and this just means A is related to B. An even more special case that we'll see a lot of is when A and B are the same set. Then we say that R is a binary relation on A. And usually we leave off the binary because the binary just refers to the fact that there are two sets. So we'll just say that R is a relation on A. So let's do some really simple examples just to sort of solidify the concepts. So let's let A be the set 1, 2, 3, 4. And we're going to look at a binary relation on A that's going to be defined by the less than operator that you're used to. So we'll say that R, the relation less than, is the set of ordered pairs X and Y in A cross A where X is less than Y. So what ordered pairs are those? Well, one is less than two, one is less than three, and one is less than four, two is less than three, two is less than four, and three is less than four. And that's it. If you look at any other possible ordered pair, it's not going to satisfy that the first element is less than the second element. We can draw a picture of this as a directed graph. So we put the might put the one over here, and one is less than two. So we usually draw it like that. One is less than three, and one is less than four. And I've drawn it like that because I also want to put in the arrow from 2 to 3 because 2 is less than 3. I want to put in the arrow from 2 to 4 because 2 is less than 4. And I want to put in an arrow from 3 to 4 because 3 is less than 4. We'll come back to this. It's not that important right now. But it is important for you to know that there are two different ways of representing relations. And we'll use whichever one is convenient for different problems. The next example I want to look at is divisibility. Um, and so that's a binary relation on A, and where now I'm going to have A be a little bit larger, all these numbers between 2 and 8. And I'm going to say that two elements of our set A 
are related if the first divides the second. And by divides, I mean there's a, it evenly divides it, the remainder is zero. So, and I've got, I'm going to use this straight line here to stand for the divides. Divides evenly. So, R is equal to the set X and Y. Uh, where x is an a and y is an a, where x divides y evenly, and we're going to write it with this bar. So what elements of a cross a are in r? Well, 2 divides 4 evenly, 2 divides 6, 2 divides 8 evenly, 3 divides 6 and 9, and of course each number divides itself evenly. So don't forget that. This is actually an important thing in lots of relations, whether or not the ordered pair consisting of the same entry for the, in the first and the second slot are the same. Again, we can draw a picture of this directed graph. The picture is a little more complicated. I'm not going to try to put in all the loops. I'll just draw part of the picture. So we might have a, our 2 here and then um, say a 4 here because 2 divides 4 and 2 also divides 6 and then 2 divides itself, so there'll be a little arrow pointing to itself. 4 divides itself, and 6 divides itself. And then we might have 3 over here, it divides itself, and it also divides 6. So you can fill out the rest of the picture, but hopefully this gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on. So probably the four most important properties of relations and it's important that you really know the definitions of these and also really understand what they imply and what they mean. So you have a binary relation R on some set A. Okay, so the Cart it's, it's again going to be a subset of the Cartesian product of A with itself. And we say that that relation is reflexive if for all X, X is related to itself. So in our divides example, right, the little loops, I mean we saw that every element divided itself, so indeed x would be related to x for all the x in a. Transitive, if x is related to y, then y and y is related to z, then x is related to z. So a good example of this might be the less than or equal to uh, example. If x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to z, then x is less than or equal to z. And we've learned that ever since grade school. Symmetric. This is an interesting and important one. If x is related to y, then y is related to x. So in other words, in that picture in the previous slide, if you had an arrow going from x to y, then you'd also have an arrow coming back from y to x. And then finally, anti-symmetric, if x is related to y and y is related to x, then x equals y. So a good example here again would be the less than or equal to uh, relation. So let's look at the less than or equal to relation. So let's just again take our simple set, a equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're going to let, let the relation again be less than or equal to. Is it reflexive? Yeah, it's reflexive because x is less than or equal to x for all the x's, for all, any of the elements in a. Is it transitive? Yeah, if x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to z, then x is less than or equal to z. And again, you learned that in grade school. Is it symmetric? Well, no, it's not symmetric because 2 is less than or equal to 3, but 3 is not less than or equal to 2. So you don't get the both orderings are in the set of ordered pairs. And is it anti-symmetric? As I mentioned above, yeah, yes it is, because if x is less than or equal to y and y is less than or equal to x, then you know that x has to equal y. So here's some questions for you to think about and try to answer them. Notice I've changed this relation. It's not less than or equal to anymore. It's just less than 
on 1, 2, 3, 4. And then also the same set of questions on the divides relation for our set 2, 3, 4, 5, up through 8. And again, I want you to tell me, are those relations, is, is, are they reflexive, transitive, symmetric, and anti-symmetric? So I'd suggest pausing the screencast right now and trying to answer those questions and then come back. So this slide has the which properties are true and which ones are not true for the different relations on the last slide. So I suggest you look at these carefully uh, and make sure that you understand them. And if you don't understand them, uh, come to class prepared to ask questions about them. There's another video following this one that goes into more detail about a very important relation that we'll be using in the class and it's very important for cryptography.